Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Pertainer. So in this video I wanted to kind of go over the process of you know kind of reviewing what is Pertainer and talking a little bit about the different features and functions of Pertainer and uh, hopefully this will give you an idea of how you can use Pertainer in your environment as well as potentially even in your home labs. Without wasting any more time let's just kind of start and go through the process. When you first sign into Pertainer you're going to be basically uh, at the screen here but you're not actually going to see these three nodes uh, because the first thing you're going to have to do is uh, you're going to have to make sure that you add these nodes to your Pertainer instance. So to add these nodes, you go to the environment and within the environment, you can basically just click on add environment where your containers are essentially being hosted. Uh, in my case, it's hosted on a Docker host. So basically a virtual machine running the Docker service. And I would pick basically a method in which I would use to connect to my Docker host. So in this case, I will use the API approach. Uh, and I would just fill in the name. This is not really important, this name. You can put in whatever name you want, uh, but you do have to specify the IP address and the port number on which you want to connect to the uh, Docker instance. Now, I do want to make sure that you are aware that in order to get this to work, you have to do some manual configuration on the Docker host side. We'll talk about that in a later video, but for now, this is kind of like where you would go to set up or connect to your Docker hosts remotely. Once you connect to your Docker hosts, you're going to be able to see them here. And in order to start managing each of these individual hosts, you can do this in two ways. You can either use the menu that is on the left here, uh, or you can use directly the options that are within the Docker host itself. So if you can kind of see in this particular view, I can see my dashboard and I can see the stacks, the images, the networks, the volumes and the containers in the exact same way that I can see all of this information here. So whether I click on the stack under the dashboard or whether I click on the stack here on the left hand side of the menu, it will bring me always to the same exact spot. Now, the dashboard is kind of broken up into five particular sections, if you will. So the first section is a stack and a stack in the Pertainer world is essentially a way of having Pertainer integrate with Docker Compose. So if you have environments where you are building, let's say, an application or deploying an application on top of containers, you might end up having multiple containers for your application. So think of like a multi-tier application, for example, this is where you might use Docker Compose. And in this case, if you are using Docker Compose, then you can actually integrate Docker Compose with stacks within the Pertainer tool. And within these stacks uh, kind of like configuration, you actually can add stacks. You can configure your own Docker Compose file through the web UI or the web interface. Uh, you can upload your file if you wanted to. You can even pull it from a Git repository or maybe have some sort of a custom template. And through each of the configurations that you do, it doesn't matter whether it's a stack, containers, images, networks, you always have the ability to basically restrict who can do what uh, in that particular section of Portainer. Now, the next area is the images. And the images is basically just the Docker images that you would basically download from Docker Hub or some other registry and use in your particular environment. With the images section, you have the ability to very easily manage these images. So I can essentially select them all and remove. I can, might be able to select an individual image and remove. I might even build a new image through building a new image this way. And I might have some type of a configuration that I have to provide. Maybe there's some additional information that I can upload, like a Docker file or maybe like a tarball, or maybe I can even specify a URL if I needed to in order to get this image built. I basically have multiple ways in which I can use Portainer to build these images. And of course, I can always import my image as well if I already have one pre-configured. We also have the advanced mode and the simple mode, so you can kind of see the differences between the two. And then we also have the networks view. Now, the networks view is basically where you can create the individual networks for your Docker applications. So if you have multiple applications, there is a good chance that you might need to create separate networks for your applications. This is where you can typically do that within the uh, Portainer application. We also have the containers view. This is where basically you can go and manage all of your containers. And within this view, you can pretty much do everything you can with the CLI in, this, in a sense. And what I mean by that is you have options like, for example, selecting all of your containers or a single container and then performing various actions, such as, for example, starting the container or stopping the container, killing the container or restarting the container or pausing the container, right? So we have the ability to remove a container or altogether, we can actually add a container if we wanted to as well. And so through this container interface, we ca we're capable of seeing a lot of different configuration options as well as we can monitor our containers. For example, I can click on this link right here and I can then see the entire log for that particular container. I can also download the logs 
if I needed to, or I can copy any of these logs and I can do, you know, various different types of filtering as well when it comes to going through these logs for a particular container. And of course, we also have the ability to do things like using an exec connection. So we can connect directly to the container. So if I click on this and I just connect directly into the container, I can then do various different uh, configurations if I really had to. So this gives me an ability to kind of manage all of that through this one container uh, interface. Outside of that, you also have information about the stack that this container is typically running in. So like I mentioned earlier, if you have multiple containers within a stack, you would see the stack information here. You also have the image information. So in this particular case, we're talking about the latest PyHole Docker image. This is what we're using in this particular case. Uh, we can also see the date that it was created. We can see the actual internal IP address of our Docker container. So this is a network that is internal to this container. This is not our external network. As well as we can also see the different ports that are mapped and published and the ownership of this particular container. We also have the option of creating persistent volumes. So if I wanted to, for example, have a volume that I can persist to all of my containers, this would be the location where I can do that. So I can click on add volume. I can specify a volume name. I can specify the type of driver that I want to use. I can potentially have driver options that I can add. I also have the ability to use something like the NFS volume or SIPS volume if I wanted to for this particular volume and I have the ability to restrict who can and cannot access this particular volume, right? So in any case, with Pertainer, when it comes to security, Pertainer does a good job of implementing things like role-based access control. So you can restrict access to only a specific subset of users. Now, outside of this particular dashboard, uh, we also have some information about a host that we're managing. So in this case, I'm talking to the Docker node one. So if I look at the host section and I look at the setup, or I should say the host information first, I can kind of see information about my host. I can see the uh, Linux distribution that I'm currently using, the kernel version, the total number of CPUs, how much memory I have on this particular host, and then engine specific details that you see over here. I also have the ability to do some more security hardening or some more hardening on a Docker host by essentially uh, implementing some of these features that are available to me here. So this is sometimes a good idea to kind of go through and see you know, what you can enable and what you would have to disable. We also have the ability to add different registries. So this is where the containers essentially, or the container images would essentially live. And so in this case, we're using the Docker hub registry, but if we were to click on add registry, we have the ability to use something like, for example, AWS ECR, Quayo.io, ProGet, Azure, GitHub, or even use something like a custom registry, where for example, I might use something like the Artifactory uh, registry uh, solution to host my container images. We also have the ability to create some teams and roles. So this is where, for example, you might have different groups or different uh, teams that I might be using Portainer and you might want to restrict certain access for those teams. So you might have something like a developer group that might be using Portainer to deploy containers in order to test their applications. Uh, or you might have other teams like QA teams and admin teams that deal with other parts of Portainer. So you can kind of configure uh, all of that here uh, and then, you know, provide specific level of access to whatever it is you want to provide access to in the Portainer environment. Under the settings section, you have the ability to make some other you know, modifications to the Portainer environment overall in general. You have the ability to define things like the snapshot interval of the Portainer environment. Uh, you can always use custom logos if you wanted to. You have the ability to provide some uh, telemetry information to the Portainer, you know, to the Portainer organization if you wanted to give them some more feedback. You also have the ability to use custom app templates uh, within Portainer, which gives you the ability to introduce a lot more apps to your environment. You also have the ability to look at things like events, and events are basically specific to the events that happen within in the uh, container. So for example, if I were to filter by Pi, which is basically my Pi hole environment, you can see all of the events that are being triggered for that particular container. Go back and see all the different events that are potentially being generated by my containers. So this was pretty much it. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment in the comment section. And if this video was helpful, feel free to like and subscribe, and I will definitely see you on the next video. Thank you very much.